need to get one of these for home. Ooh. All right, good afternoon, everybody. Glad you're here. Nice to see everybody. Got a few brave ones in the front row. Thank you. <laughs> it's my pleasure. Hey, Dan. Hello to everybody out in the field, too. Hopefully, we have lots of folks calling in from the field because we have a special guest today. It's Rebecca Water. Um, it's so nice to have you here. Thank you for joining us and taking time out of your busy schedule. Rebecca's invitation. Absolutely. Rebecca's actually here for the Fish Passage Conference. It's an international conference. I think it's the second annual one being held at UMass all week. And Rebecca's been asked to be the plenary speaker tomorrow morning. So we capitalized on your visit and asked if you wouldn't mind coming to talk to us a little bit here in Region 5. Rebecca is a, the special counsel special advisor to Secretary Salazar on the America's Great Outdoors with a special focus on rivers and the Rivers Initiative. So Rebecca's here to talk to us a little bit about what's going on in the Secretary's, Secretary's Corridor um, on all of these initiatives and has been doing fantastic work um, on that. So I'm looking forward to having that dialogue with all of you and learning more about um, the Rivers Initiative. Come on in, everybody. There's seats, plenty of seats. Um, and speaking of the River Initiative, we have 13 of the 51 that are nationally being um, talked about and discussed and acted upon. We have 13 in the Northeast, and out of those, we have eight that Fish and Wildlife Services lead for. So it's pretty exciting. We have a lot of good things going on in the Northeast, and it's fun to be able to show a little of that off. We're going to give Rebecca a field trip tomorrow to see some of the good work going on in Fish Passage, too. So we're excited for that opportunity. Um, so with no further ado, I think I'll just give a quick introduction, um, a little background on Rebecca, and then I'll turn it over to you to talk to us for a little bit. Um, so I had the pleasure of being with Rebecca on May 24th. The secretary came to Hartford, Secretary Salazar, and some of the uh, local um, congressmen and senators. Together, they announced the um, secretary signed a secretarial order on the National Blue Way System. And it was very exciting. And that was um, largely in part due to Rebecca's effort, and we really appreciate that. And Rebecca was able to name the Connecticut River the first, first ever uh, Blue Way. So that was a big event. We got great media, good attention, and it's nice to see that system be, you know, be recognized for all the years and years of good work. And as you know, it's a... It's Silvio Conti Refuge is a big leader in that. I think there's over 40 partners that have been working on that four-state river system for a long time. I think it's something like 410 miles of river and over 7 million acres. So it's a big system, and it's really exciting to be able to have that attention with a focus on recreation and conservation and bolstering the economy. And so I think the idea is to have blue ways recognized across the nation. And Rebecca will talk a little bit about more about, I think, that effort as well. But so not only is Rebecca an incredible woman, but she's a um, huge in a conservation leader in the U.S., and it's really great to have her as part of the Department of Interior's administration. So um, Rebecca, in the past, has served as the president and CEO of American Rivers, which I'm sure you're all very familiar with that organization. It's the nation's leading river conservation organization, and you were there from 95, I believe, to 2011. And you successfully directed strategic, programmatic, and financial operations, resulting in an eight-fold increase in revenue, a four-fold increase in growth in staff, and establishment of more than a dozen field offices delivering conservation services to communities across America. And under your leadership, America Rivers helped dozens of communities transform their rivers from liabilities to assets. Through innovative conservation measures like the creation of river trails, the removal of obsolete and dangerous dams, and the implementation of green infrastructure solutions to safeguard clean water. As we all know, that's really important to us here in the Northeast. Under your direction, the organization developed effective public education and involvement programs such as America's Top Ten Most Endangered Rivers and the National River Cleanup, which you get to see every year. It comes out in the news. That's a big deal when they announce what are the uh, ten most endangered rivers. Rebecca served as a conservation chair of the National Lewis and Clark Bicentennial Commemoration and played a leadership role in developing the American Heritage, Ri Heritage Rivers Initiative. And in 2010, she, she was recognized as in the top 25 outstanding conservationists by Outdoor Life magazine and was named Woman of the Year by the American Sport Fishing Association in 1998. Impressive. 
From 1981 to 1994, Rebecca served in several different capacities. You were at the Wilderness Society as Vice President for Organizational Development, Vice President for Membership Marketing and Development, and as Director of the Alaska Program. So prior to that, Rebecca was a legislative assistant to the U.S. Senator Gaylord Nelson in Wisconsin. And during that, she directed a, a recreation and resource. Oh, and during that, before that, you directed a res recreation and resource study for the Lower St. Croix. I was there, National Wild and Scenic River for the states of Wisconsin and Minnesota and the National Park Service. And lastly, Rebecca began her career as an environmental planner for the Leo A. Daly Company, architects, engineers, and planners, preparing environmental impact statements and developing environmental components of large-scale engineering projects. Rebecca holds a BA in biology and a BA in environmental studies from the University of Kansas, graduating with highest distinction. And you also hold an MS in landscape architecture and water resource management from the University of Wisconsin, Madison. We're very happy to have you. Thank you for joining us and welcome to Region 5 and the great employees that work here. You're just seeing um, about 200, I was saying we have about 200 people here in the regional office and another thousand just about out in the field. So hopefully many of them are joining us here today. Nice to have you. <coughs> Thanks, Wendy. Uh, it, it's, it's terrific to be here. I was up in this region just a couple of weeks ago for as Wendy said, for the uh, creation of this new national blueway system and recognizing uh, the Connecticut River as the first national blueway. And, and, and through that, I had a chance to work with some of your colleagues up in this region. I see Marcy Kaplis out uh, in the audience. She was uh, key to the su success of that event. And, and uh, Andy French, of course, uh, uh, was a, 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 just a rock for the entire effort. So it's, it's been... Um, one of the places that I've really enjoyed uh, wor learning from, working with, and uh, I know I'll get a lot more out of my visit today and tomorrow. So appreciate being up here and having a chance to tell you a little bit, a little bit about what's going on in uh, the Secretary's office, particularly when it comes to rivers, and then just answer your questions or do the best that I can to try to answer your questions. As, as Wendy went through my, um, my bio, what you probably heard over and over again was uh, river. Uh, there's a river theme, um, not just because my last name is Water, but there's a connection there. <laughs> and, um, and so I, I have been working on this subject um, for many, many years. And, and some people come to river work in, in different ways. Some people are passionate fly fishermen. Some people are whitewater kayakers. You know, I, I come to rivers from a more, I guess, a more philosophical and holistic um, perspective. Um, I, I, for one thing, I think rivers, well, rivers are just a good medium for conservation, and conservation is something I've been interested in for my, practically my whole life. So, um, you know, in one, one thing about rivers, we have three and a half million miles of rivers in the country, a quarter of a million named rivers. It's, rivers were how we uh, built this country. We explored by rivers. We settled on the banks of rivers. We, we built our cities and powered our cities and got our drinking water. So rivers have tremendous reach. I mean, just really anywhere that I go in the country, there's going to be a river there. And the river is going to be part of the story of the community that I'm visiting. And so there's always, there's always a, um, a way to talk about rivers no matter, no matter where I go. And, and similarly, um, I can talk about rivers t to anyone because rivers are relevant to all kinds of things. You don't have to be a card-carrying conservationist to care about your river. You, um, it, 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 it's clean water. It's, uh, for many communities, it's, it's part of the transportation system. It may provide power. It certainly provides open space and, and wonderful wildlife habitat. So rivers are relevant to the things that almost anybody cares about. There's some way you can talk to, to nearly anyone about a river and make it relevant to their lives. And, and most important of all, um, rivers are, are resilient. And uh, that is something I, I really love about them. Um, you know, one of my favorite memories is uh, going back more than a decade when I was in Augusta, Maine in July of 1999 for the removal of the Edwards Dam on the Kennebec River. Uh, that dam had been there for 164 years. Nathaniel Hawthorne wrote about salmon butting their noses into that dam to, to 
gives you a, a way to think about how, how long it had been there. And yet within a season when that dam had been removed, salmon were back to their prime spawning habitat, the river had, had recovered, and, and great things were happening. And, and so that's really, if, if of all the things that I love about rivers, I think it's that resilience, that capacity for restoration that um, gives me a sense of hope. You know, it gives me a, a sense that even in the face of just all the things that we're up against in the 21st century, um, that rivers ha give them a little bit of help and they will pay us back uh, through, their, through their ability to, to become restored. So anyhow, that's, those are the kinds of things that have kept me going at this subject all these years and, and uh, I think will keep me going for many more, I hope. Um, so. I've um, come to the Department uh, of Interior at the end of a fairly long career already. Uh, I'd been in, as, as Wendy said, I'd been in the uh, conservation movement for 30 years uh, prior to coming to the department. And uh, when I first moved to Washington, I actually was really uh, dream come true to work for Gaylord Nelson. I don't know how many of you are old enough to remember Gaylord, but he was the founder of Earth Day, uh, just a champion. Uh, of, of the conservation movement when he was governor in Wisconsin and when he came to the United States Senate and served there for three terms. So working for him as his environmental legislative aide was, was just extremely special and, and what I think really put me solidly on this course. And, and so to sort of end up my career now at the department um, is an equally treasured moment and, and uh, something I feel very honored and privileged to be working for Secretary Salazar, if there is a uh, bigger champion for rivers in the United States government, I don't know who that would be. Uh, the, he, he truly believes in, in uh, the value of rivers and, and the importance of the job that the Department of the Interior is doing with respect to protecting and restoring and making rivers assets for our communities all across the country, whether we're talking about human communities or wildlife, natural communities. So, so you all probably know that a couple of years ago, in the spring of 2010, President Obama launched a, a conservation initiative with a lot of help from Secretary Salazar called America's Great Outdoors. And that's become the signature conservation initiative of this administration. <clears throat> so that was the spring of 2010. And uh, to determine what was going to be part of this initiative, uh, uh, many, many listening sessions were held across the country. And one of the things that came up time after time after time was how important rivers are to uh, the American communities. And, and, and so what happened as a result of all of that groundswell of support is that when the America's Great Outdoors Initiative was sort of stood up and, and established, it, it was built on three pillars, and one of those three pillars is rivers. And I'll just tell you, the other two, one, one of the other two is urban parks, and, and, this, and the, second, the third one in this trilogy is uh, large landscapes. But rivers were one of three pillars, and, and um, so Secretary Salazar, I, I'm sure, had something to do with that in addition to all of the citizens who spoke up about rivers. And, and uh, but time passed and, and um, I came to the department last August uh, and, and uh, in January of this year, uh, Secretary Salazar decided that he wanted to launch uh, a specific rivers initiative as part of America's Great Outdoors. And uh, so he um, asked me to do some thinking about that, uh, had me work with a number of colleagues from across the department to think through what it might be and in January, the very end of January, uh, this was announced. So we've, we've only been in business for a, a handful of, of months, uh, but we're moving at a fast pace because we, we know the clock is uh, short, uh, that we have a lot of work to get done before the end of the year. So we've, we've, we're, we've been at work for a few months now. We have um, sort of two broad areas of endeavor. One is um, river recreation. Uh, making rivers more accessible and, and making them valued assets to communities. And the second area is river restoration, rivers uh, <clears throat> as habitat, rivers as migration corridors. So those are the, the two sides of the initiative, the re recreation side and the restoration side. 
Um, and, and, and it's because um, rivers have these qualities that I was alluding to uh, moments ago. I mean, they're, they're um, great ways to connect people to the out of doors. They're, they're close to home for every community. They are great wildlife habitat. And, and they, get, they allow people a chance to, to get involved, to, whether they're coming just for a weekend uh, or an afternoon river cleanup, or maybe they're going to get involved in something much larger, like 60 years of effort on the Connecticut River watershed. Um, uh, you know, people have things that they can do uh, on a volunteer basis or as a public servant to, to get involved with rivers. <clears throat> so so um, we have a sort of a three-part strategy for this, um, for this initiative, again, with very short time and, and very limited resources. Uh, we've chosen to um, focus on doing three kinds of things. One is uh, demonstration projects, highlighting um, projects that are, are worth our worthy models, sort of showing the way by uh, picking out some projects around the country. The second thing we want to do is uh, make it easier. Uh, find ways through some of the new technology to collect up the tools and services that are and abilities that are already out there and, and make it easier for both our own colleagues within the federal family, but also the people we work with at the state and local level and in the grassroots to access the things that we have avail available to us in the way of technical knowledge and capacities and some grant monies as well. <clears throat> Excuse me. And the third element is, is uh, of, this, of this strategy is inspiration uh, so that we can put these ideas out there through stories and through events and, and through gatherings and hopefully give other communities the idea that, hey, you know, I, we have a river and maybe we could have some of that good stuff in our community as well. Uh, so, so show the way, make it easier, and inspire involvement. That's, that's sort of our three, the three parts of our, of our strategy. Um, <clears throat> at this point, we've stood up a few program elements. Wendy re referred to one. Uh, we've picked out a project in each of the 50 states plus the districts. We have 51 river, all American river projects around the country. The way we got these projects is that we asked Fish and Wildlife Service, National Park Service, the Bureau of Land Management, and the Bureau of Reclamation to look across their, their river related projects and, and sort of lift up the ones that they thought. Uh, we're, we're make good models to be these demonstrations of, of what, we're, what we're doing and, and some of the best stuff that we're doing. So we got a lot of nominations from across the country. We had to uh, go through a, a winnowing process and a selection process because we only had one slot per state. Um, uh, but we, and we tried to get some diversity too. We tried to have different kinds of projects, different kinds of problems that were being attacked. Anyhow, we ended up with 51 projects. And two weeks ago, we had our rollout um, where every day for five days, we put out a press release and identified the projects in, in five different regions of the country. So those projects are all out there. Again, they were projects that were nominated by the Bureau. So they're already up and, up and running. Uh, we have a, a leader in each case. Uh, we're, we're working with the leader um, to make sure that we are going to really learn the lessons of these projects, capture what they know and, and make it available, share it with others. So, so that's one part of the work. And, and within that work, there's, there's lots of, um, Wendy mentioned 13, 14 programs, uh, uh, projects up here in New England, many of which are being led by the Fish and Wildlife Service, many of which have to do with fish passage. So uh, a, lo a lot of what you do is, is reflected in these projects. We have, uh, so that's, that's one element. Um, a second element, um, I'm sort of doing these somewhat chronologically. Um, uh, that's how they're occurring to me anyway. Um, we worked with the National Park Service to put out a new and improved program around national water trails. So there, there have been national water trails as part of the National Recreation Trail system for many, many years. Uh, but the Park Service decided as part of this emphasis in America's Great Outdoors, of emphasis on recreation and conservation, to uh, try to take that program and really upgrade it. And um, they worked very hard. They identified uh, half a dozen best management practices that um, they're applying to these trails. They've created, or they're in the process of creating a, a community of mentors 
for the trails. So they've, they've done, they're doing a lot of work to sort of make these more valuable, more sustainable, more, more higher value assets to the communities that, that are going forward to get a national water trail designation. A third element is this new idea of a new, sort of a back to the future, new old idea, I guess, of national blueway system. This, um, this is a, a, a new a, approach to rivers. Most river uh, protection, conservation, recreation uh, programs look at rivers um, on a segment basis, and they tend to just look at a fairly narrow riparian corridor, maybe a quarter mile on either side of the river. And uh, so when we were looking around to implement the Secretary's vision for rivers, we asked ourselves, what could we come up with that would be truly additive to the, the options that um, are currently on the table? And, and, and actually, it was the Conti Refuge that um, inspired us and gave us the concept, gave us the model and the vision uh, of, of what we wanted to do. So it was right here in this region that we found our idea. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, and it was with a lot of help from Andy French, not, uh, my, by the way, so he, he also deserves uh, a lot of thanks. Um, but the idea is, is to, to look at um, rivers from headwaters to mouth or confluence and, and to look across the watershed uh, of the river and, and to approach this from uh, in, an integrated basis, integrating the land and the water management and bringing together the practitioners uh, who have responsibility for the land and the water and trying to get that in a collaborative, integrated approach uh, and, and to do it um, with, with really strong stakeholder partnerships. Again, the Friends of Conti, which if you are aren't familiar is an association of more than 40 organizations that are working together, uh, who have come together to, to, to talk about how to proceed with the Conti Refuge, 7.2 million acres in terms of the legislated uh, project area. So, so those are the elements of a national blue way, that it's watershed wide, that it's integrated land and water, and that it's community based and, and, and really uh, has a, uh, an active stakeholder partnership across the watershed. And uh, so we've, we've just announced the system. It's, it's still being developed, constructed, if you will. Uh, we went ahead and named the first system, the first Blue Way, because, as I said, the Conti was the, is the inspiration for all of this. Uh, we hope to have several other pilots around the country, many of which will have Fish and Wildlife Service involvement in other regions. So we're we want to take the ideas that we've developed here in New England and, and make sure that they work in the, in the southeast, in the northwest, and, and in the west. Um, we're going to be developing a, a, an awards program that is at least inspired by the LEED system, if you know LEED, which is a, a program by which buildings and, and, and developments can be judged for their uh, environment and energy um, uh, quality and and so that's an idea that that we won't just lift it entirely but we'll be looking at that as as an inspiration in terms of having criteria in different categories and um, uh, having a, 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 a voluntary self-evaluation process that will lead to a nomination will be a, will be evaluated and uh, we hope it'll be a very prestigious award um, that um, you know something that communities really want to work to um, to be able to get this award, and uh, we hope that um, it will certainly come with uh, a lot of high-level support. Secretary Salazar is reaching out to other cabinet secretaries. We hope to have an MOU that goes across a number of the most important um, partners, certainly Department of Agriculture, Army Corps of Engineers, EPA. So we're hoping that this will be something that will um, not just be a pre prestigious award, although that's an important part of it, but that will uh, bring a lot of value to the communities that come together to seek one of these nominations. A um, couple of other things I'll mention. Um, we, are, we are hoping to create a, a web-based one-stop shop where we collect up tools and services and, and, and um, 
uh, hopefully a directory of people across the department within um, the key bureaus who know something about rivers so that we could have an annotated directory of people who would be good resources when, uh, when you're working on a project and have a, a question and are looking for uh, somebody who might have this expertise. Uh, and, and we're also working on developing, again, I mentioned a moment ago around Blue Ways, but more generally developing MOUs um, with other agencies. I worked on one with the Fish and Wildlife Service again early on um, getting an MOU between Agriculture and Commerce and the Department of, Interior, of the Interior for the Nish National Fish Habitat Action Plan. Uh, and that was something that we were able to get signed and, and hopefully that will do a, a lot of good in supporting the, the um, private public fish habitat partnerships across the country. So, so we're working hard uh, to get these kinds of uh, elements stood up uh, and uh, I can't I uh, can't say for sure what the future of all of this work is going to be. It's a, it's a little bit early for me to know that, although uh, if I were here in two weeks, I probably would have um, more of a sense because the secretary is uh, giving a lot of thought to how to uh, ensure th this work over the long term. And I know those conversations are starting. And, and so uh, to be, uh, stay tuned, we'll, we'll be figuring this out as we go forward. Um, but I think that's probably, uh, adequate run through of what we're up to. So I would be glad to try to answer any questions. Any questions? There's all kinds of great things going on. This is a great opportunity to, oh, good. So, so I do have a, a question and that is, I chair a habitat committee in the Chesapeake Bay and one of the issues that, that comes up over and over and I think it kind of fits to your second kind of point which is make it easier and that is that people that are doing restoration work are finding it harder and harder to get the permits for doing that kind of restoration it used to be we got kind of a professional pass to go through and do that kind of work and and again now it's getting more and more complex and I know you understand that because you've tried to remove major dams and uh, so I'm just curious how 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 we move forward on these initiatives when it's very, again, you have a lot of agencies that have a lot of conflicting interests. I know we found it with like wind power where you had to almost pre-site it and, and lay out all the environmental issues first before you could even consider uh, laying something out there. And I wonder if we have to do that even for wetland permits now. <clears throat> You know, I, uh, when I came up to Hartford a couple of weeks ago, I, I flew up with um, Rock Salt. Great name, Rock Salt. <laughs> um, he is the Deputy Assistant Secretary of the Army uh, for Civil Works. So he... Uh, it's true. <laughs> he is the, <laughs> the right hand of Joellen Darcy, who's the Assistant Secretary for the Corps of Engineers. And I don't know if you were thinking about the Corps when you were... Um, uh, <laughs> Not just the core, but uh, but you know, Rock and I spent the better part of of an hour talking about the issue that you raise, and uh, you know we didn't solve it in an hour. But I will say that I think in in him and and uh, and in Joel and Darcy, we have uh, partners who understand this and who want to make a difference, and that's one of the reasons that we're talking about MOUs. I've got one on my desk right now that uh, actually Rock took the lead in uh, drafting, and and so we're going to be working hard to see if we can get this through um, a three-way signing between us, agriculture, and the Corps. Uh, maybe we ought to be talking about with EPA as well and and DOT. I mean, there are many other agencies I know that are are key to this question, resolving this question. Um, you know, I agree. It's 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 a big one. Uh, but it's, 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 a, a, it's achievable. It's, it's just a matter of, of patience and persistence. And, and I think right now we have uh, people in, this, in the seats who want to see it done. So this is a good opportunity. We'll give it our best shot and see if we can, I don't know that we can solve all the problems, but maybe we can solve, I tend to, I tend to try to find places where there's low hanging fruit, where there's something that we can get done. Uh, and, and so maybe there's one permit process that we might be able to resolve and then use that as an example of the good that can come from working something like that out and then hopefully that will be replicated uh, into the future. 
wealth. Uh, Rebecca, welcome to the region. My name is Bill Ashmo. I'm with the fisheries program up here, and we're really excited about this new initiative. Uh, we have a lot of programs. You referenced one of them, the uh, NIFHAP program and fish passage and so forth. Will we see any of these rolled up into a budget initiative in 2014 to kind of incentivize our folks uh, behind the AGO? We're really excited about it, and having some additional funds will go a long way. Yeah. <laughs> um. You know, being a new, a relative newcomer at the department, um, I'm I'm just sort of being introduced to the intricacies and and uh, secrets of the budgeting process. So I I, I certainly am in conversations um, with uh, policy management and budget. I will also tell you that the secretary is. Uh, I mentioned a few minutes ago that he's interested in what the long-term uh, legacy. From all of this work will be, and so he um, is also looking at, at the kinds of questions that you just raised. Uh, so I, no promises, and and, um, uh, and and I can't really even predict what the outcome will be. But but there is a lot of interest and a lot of conversations going on, um, and it's not just um, you know certainly not just within the Fish and Wildlife Service. I mean there are there are four bureaus that are involved in this conversation, and and um, one of the interesting um, parts of, of, of all this work is, is working with Bureau of Reclamation. Uh, and, and surprising to me, but there's a, a passion there for uh, river restoration work. Uh, that Mike Connor, who's the Bureau Director, really sees that as the 21st century role of Bureau of Reclamation and, and is, is really pushing hard on this. So um, I think that helps. Also, that that it's it's um, across several different bureaus, Bureau of Land Management, another place where uh, I've I've been pleasantly surprised by the level of passion for this kind of work, um, and certainly the Park Service as well. But I sort of expected it at the Park Service. Um, so it's 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 been really encouraging to see uh, how many people think this is something worth doing. Who else? Good afternoon. Welcome. I'm Kenny Lowe with the Science Applications Program. Um, and one of the hats I wear is with the chair of the North Atlantic LCC. And I've been involved in a lot of the America's Great Outdoors kind of initial coordination in this region. And, and I was wondering if you could help us maybe, and I, I know the communications and there's are evolving and there's lots of moving parts to America's Great Outdoors right now and and um, some of them that we have in northern New England are the the large northern forest landscape we have the 50 state projects of which we have many in this region that we're lead for and now the blue ways and now the 50 river projects um, maybe you can help us evolve an effective communication to our partners because as you said before the community part of this is so essential to getting things done on the ground and, and a, a better understanding of how these parts fit together within America's Great Outdoors would be helpful as we go along. Do you have any thoughts on that today? I, I know it's still sure. evolving, but sure. love to I hear do. your thoughts. I, I have a few thoughts, Kenny. I'm not sure if I have a, comp, you know, a nice comprehensive answer for you, but I have a few thoughts. Um, you know, maybe just start with a, um, a little story. Just uh, you mentioned the, the Northern Forest LCC. And um, you know, not too long ago, I was part of a conference call uh, between the Green Mountain and White Mountain National Forests and some of the USDA people in Washington and, and um, Conti Refuge and, and others. Uh, and we were looking at the overlap between the, the Connecticut River watershed, i.e. the Conti Refuge, and the Northern Forest LCC. And part of top third of the Connecticut water, River watershed is in is in that zone, and uh, we were having just this conversation about how not to confuse people, how not to wear them out, uh, and and what came out of that conversation, which was a combination of people on the ground and people in Washington, was an agreement that we were going to take the Connecticut Upper Connecticut watershed component and integrate it into this this Conti Refuge Connecticut River watershed National Blue Way element. Um, and so, I mean, I guess I just tell that story to say we recognized it, we talked about it, 
we made a we made a, uh, a, a consensus decision, and and I hope that will serve us well going forward. Um, you know, I'm I'm puzzled oftentimes because I see these these large landscape efforts, and um, I I think in large landscape all the time. They're called watersheds, <laughs> um, and and so I I, th I I think that we this is a good uh, perhaps not an um, uh, you know a, a um, stated objective of the of this work, but the intersection between land and water. Uh, I think that's part of the contribution here. This isn't just about rivers. It's really about land and water and, and how those things work together. Um, so I, I think that's um, maybe initially extra confusion, but I hope over the longer term something that makes more sense uh, ecologically and, and, and hopefully makes more sense in terms of spending tax dare, taxpayer dollars wisely. Uh, working on a watershed basis because that's so much of what happens in terms of water supply and pollution and stormwater and all the things that are happening on a watershed basis. Um, and then, you know, in terms of just communicating um, more clearly, I think that's something we need to do. Um, I discovered, much to my horror, that um, the website for America's Great Outdoors is just completely out of date and. Uh, uh, you know, so it was like it was stood up and then forgotten. Um, so now we're working to try to rectify that. And um, we have, uh, thanks to some help from people in communications, um, you know, just developed a map that has clickable uh, buttons for all of 51 river projects. Uh, so we're, we're hoping to get the information just more clearly and easily accessible. So there's a, there's a lot of I think a lot of recognition of the of the problem that you're raising and some efforts in the right direction and hopefully we'll um, you know keep doing stakeholder outreach to explain ourselves to our partners and and find ways that this really does provide value and if it provides value then I think we'll be in a good place. Hi. My name is Christine Beauregard. I'm here with the contracting office. But I am also on a conservation commission in my town. And there's always a lot more work to be done communicating with the public on a one-on-one -on -one basis. And I was wondering if you could elaborate a little bit more on your Blue Way project, uh, what your local towns, how you can connect with them, and if there are grants that they can apply four because one of our little villages is actually called three rivers so it's uh it's a very valuable asset for for us locally christina right yeah, yeah. um <clears throat> i'm i'm struggling a little bit to answer your question because we one of the, the um issues that we have not nailed down yet around about about the National Blue Way System is the size of the watershed that we're going to be aiming at. But we're sort of aiming at larger watersheds rather than smaller watersheds, at least right now. And so, you know, our first one was 7.2 million acres, 410 mile river. That was a big, like, Huck 4, Huck 6 kind of a watershed. And, and if we're talking at the, at the town level, of course, even if you're talking about a watershed, you're going to be talking about, you know, very small, I'm sure. Um, and, and so right now, the Blue Ways system is really designed for um, communities of communities, <laughs> you know, uh, 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 watershed-wide partnerships. So I think that um, initially, at least, the, you know, the goals are going to be to bring many communities together to create a vision for what that watershed, how that watershed can, can be more resilient and and hopefully the benefits then to the communities like the ones you're talking about in terms of <clears throat> better protection from floods and droughts and cleaner water and higher quality um, outdoor space and recreation and, and then that breeds hopefully jobs and tourism. I mean, it, it, it'll be, I think, probably pretty indirect, at least in its, in its first iteration at, for a, a smaller community. Um, but we are, I mean, one of the things that um, Reclamation suggested to us, there's a um, 
program called Cooperative Watershed Management Program. Right now it's just a reclamation program, but it gives out small grants to, at the community level for communities that want to get into watershed planning. Uh, and you know, given that it's reclamation right now, it's only available in the West. But we're hoping that this is an idea that might get picked up and, and made nationwide. And, and that would be you know, small five, ten thousand dollar grants to communities that want to start thinking about uh, their their river in a watershed way. So, stay tuned. I hope I hope that will be something for your um, size community in the future. Hi, Rebecca. We have a great field audience today. There's probably at least 40 folks out there at a minimum, and one of them has a question for you. I was wondering what the biggest challenging aspect of ris river restoration would be. What's your biggest challenging aspect of ri river restoration? Hmm, biggest challenging. Uh, <clears throat> you know, I guess it's resources. Um, and there's there's uh, so much interest, I think, in river restoration, and um, and really a lot of ability to, to do it at, at at so many different levels. So I, I think it's just the fact that we're we're short on resources. I, I um, you know, I, in answering the question, I come back to the the permit point that we were talking about earlier. Oh, I've got one. Thanks. Um, maybe Wendy would like it. Um, and uh, <clears throat> the fact that that we oftentimes, you know, take a step forward and then two steps back when we're when we're um, trying to solve a problem with with um, in a hurry I'm thinking about the the work that's being done up here after hurricane or tropical storm Irene and and uh, there are very few dollars to, to fix these road crossings but you know we're, we're fixing them too often in a way that's just gonna fail again and and in an era with sh with very sh uh, limited resources at every level from the federal down to the local government um, to use those, those dollars in a way that isn't going to stand the test of time just seems uh, tragic. And, and um, so I, I think just finding the resources to, to do the job is certainly um, no shortage of people who love rivers, who want to get involved in this work. There's a lot of knowledge and it's growing all the time. I mean, we have a lot of things going for us, but we're probably most limited by resources. Any other questions, comments? Hi, Rebecca. Uh, Paul Pajak in the fisheries program. Um, I think we've probably had parallel careers. It seems like we've woven our way through all the same uh, initiatives. But um, as you were summarizing, the, you know, the Blue Ways initiative, it, it was really reminiscent for people who've been around for a while, the whole American Heritage Rivers initiative, a lot of the same recurring interdisciplinary themes, landscape level. I guess as you, as you sort of flip through the folders of that kind of history as you strategize moving forward, um, what would you say are sort of the, the salient pieces of the Blue Way strategy that would remain the same? And maybe what do you see as maybe some of the biggest strategies that we need to pursue, especially in light of the economy and the shortage of resources, to create what's, what's that big value-added strategy that we need out there, I guess, to build on what worked with the American Heritage Rivers, but but what we need to do, because obviously it's not around anymore. Yeah, yeah. And I was—I actually was fairly involved in American Heritage River, so I—I I, um, I do know that story. Um, and there's some similarities, but I think there are a lot of differences as well. I, I would, when I said back to the future in terms of the the um, description of the National Blueway System, I was really thinking about sort of every 40 years, every generation, we seem to have a real push on watersheds. Uh, whether it's river basin commissions or you know there, there's we we sort of rediscover this idea of watersheds um, you know every few every generation and and realize um, how powerful that concept is from a strategic point of view so I would say that that you know the key uh, elements I've, I've mentioned some of them already but it's you know the the general idea is that when we um, design our built environment 
in, in ways that either mimic natural systems and natural forces or work with the natural systems, uh, we're going to have a better result. It's going to uh, be uh, a better use of, of scarce resources. It might cost more in the beginning, but it's going to have it's going to be more flexible and more resilient and sustainable. And so these solutions are going to have better value to taxpayers, um, particularly now that we're facing um, more frequent extreme weather conditions, whether that's too much rain or not enough. Um, the, I think systems that work with the natural uh, dynamics are going to be more flexible. Um, you know, I, I uh, am familiar with work that's being done in uh, Philadelphia, and they're, they're uh, attacking uh, their, uh, they've got a combined sewer overflow problem there. And uh, they were talking about spending $3 billion to put in a deep tunnel, uh, as was done in Chicago. By the way, the Chicago tunnel overflowed the first time it rained um, <clears throat> there because they had a big event and they hadn't, their engineers hadn't planned on that. So, so um, but instead of going for $3 billion in a deep tunnel, which the mayor's, they, they're instead they're going with for a green infrastructure, a natural infrastructure. It's going to cost them one billion, so they're going to have two billion dollars to spend on teachers and firemen and police. And as the mayor said, you know, you really can't tailgate on a deep tunnel. They're going to have a much more <laughs> livable community, and so there's multiple benefits that that come from these natural approaches. So I, you know, I've, that to me, that the, the the idea of a blue way system is a system that, that as I said, it, it, it's on the watershed level, it looks at the whole river, it integrates land and water in a way that, that, uh, that respects and, and works with the natural forces. Uh, you know, it's, it's about bringing communities together because you know, these are, these are long-term efforts um, and, and multi-party efforts. And hopefully, it's, we can make it a sufficiently prestigious award that um, you know, it'll be worth something to um, to the communities that are able to come together. One of the things that we are talking about is having um, having a Blue Ways Award at three stages: uh, at the vision stage, and then the plan stage, and then the implementation stage. So, recognizing that you can't get to things like this in a short amount of time, you first have to bring the entire uh, watershed together around a vision, and why is that vision going to uh, be attractive to parts of the community that maybe don't care about fish and wildlife habitat, but maybe do care a lot about how much it costs to provide sanitary um, and, and storm sewer services. So, so I, that's not a very crisp answer to your question, but it's sort of the direction that I think we need to head. <laughs> Anyone else? Liz. Hi, I'm Liz. Can you hear me? Yeah, I'm Liz Dawson. Um, I'm actually in the um, engineering group here, um, but I I just had a general thought. I, it just seems like Blue Way is a very catchy name for this whole thing. and. Um, I just wanted to compliment you or whoever thought of that. I think it's really great, and I hope that that helps you um, with getting this thing mobilized. Liz? Yeah, th thanks, Liz. I, um, <clears throat> I, I don't think I'm going to claim credit for it. I think there, it's, it's um, a lot of people contributed to the idea of that name. But I, you know, I do think <clears throat> that it's a catchy name, and I think um, if we're going to do things like large landscapes, that's a mouthful, you know. So we need a we need a catchy name, and maybe blue ways will blue ways and green ways. I don't know, but it, it, I hope something like that will um, start to mean something to the public in the, as, as years go by. Thank you. Um, I'm Megan Nagel. I'm with Science Applications. 
And um, so speaking of the public, and I think you've kind of, for me, laid out my general question, which is, what is a blue way? So we talked about vision and planning and implementation. But if we're talking to the public about a blue way, which is a great name, and it's um, how, what's the simplest way for me to explain to, like, my parents or my neighbor why it's so exciting that we have the Connecticut River as the first blue way in the country? Well, I mean, I, I think maybe the simplest way for the average person to think about it is it's, it's a, a river from source to sea, uh, from headwaters to, I mean, not all rivers flow to the sea, obviously, but, um, but source to sea is, a, I think, a simple way to think about it. So it's, it's the entire river, the whole river, and its watershed. That's what a blue way is. And, and the other things that are, are critical to getting this designation is that it's, it's a, 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 a partnership of all the stakeholders within the watershed coming together to start to, to create integrated land and water management to have a healthy river, a healthy river system. So uh, that, th I think the, the first part of that is probably the shortest piece, but then to get beyond that, some of those other aspects are important, and um, hopefully that will suffice um, for you. Yes, thank you. It was fun at the, de at the Connecticut River um, dedication. There were so many people there from different backgrounds and different interests. And so it was really fun to be able to even see that initial uh, event catch so many people, you know, whether they were there for the paddling or the clean water or for conservation or restoration or they were a local business owner that wanted to be able to use that as a marketing tool to bring more people in or contributing towards a cleaner. It was really fun. So I think we can really communicate that in different ways depending on our audiences too. So. I have another comment, and it, and you know, something you said a minute ago, at the um, the intersection between, say, the Northern Forest Landscape Plan and the and the Connecticut River, and the fact that four states identified the Connecticut River as part of their 50 state projects. One of the things that's exciting to me is that you've recognized the Connecticut River first, and and that's very significant because here in the Northeast, I think we have a very different kind of conservation solution necessary. And you alluded to it a minute ago when you're talking about communities and and Megan was talking about it a little bit, this, this idea that we have small broken up landscapes that are pretty messy to deal with in the long term for conservation solutions. But it's necessary to deal with it that way if we're going to get anything done. So, so we've through things like the Connie Refuge and many other collaborative projects going on in the Northeast, we've, we've kind of gone at it from that angle of, of involving lots of communities, lots of private landowners, lots of incentives, and big vision, and, and tried to assemble a conservation solution in that light that's very different from some Western states that have huge federal ownerships or large ranches or you know opportunities that are very different than we have here in the East. So it's very exciting for me that you've recognized the Northeast in, in kind of a leading an effort like this because it's so central to so many of the conservation solutions that we have to put on the ground here. So thank you. For giving us the chance to learn from you. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> we have time for maybe one more question, comment. Very good. Well, this is, um, again, I want to take this opportunity to thank you for taking time with us. These are excellent, what we call initiatives, but I hope they're not initiatives. I hope they are longstanding. I hope they're a way of doing business from here out into the future. And I've had the pleasure of being with the Secretary the last couple of weeks at several events, and each time he says, now how are we going to keep this, you know, around, even when I'm long gone? How is this going to be a legacy that we leave? And so I ask all of you to think about that. Um, these are really important efforts, and it does bring attention finally. You know, we're all focused at this large landscape level approach to conservation, and we have so many different constituents that we serve in our roles, Fish and Wildlife Service employees. And um, I think there's probably multiple ways of answering that question. How do we leave this legacy? But each and every one of you, no matter what program you're in, no matter what pay grade you're in, all have a role in the Fish and Wildlife Service towards this mission and leaving this legacy. 
and this is just one aspect, but between blue ways and green ways and large landscape conservation, we all can be leaving the legacy by either being the communicators or getting our hands and feet dirty in the, you know, in the dirt doing the actual work, or whether it's letting a contractor helping get IT services done so folks can get the message out. I mean, every one of us play a role. So I ask uh, each and every one of you to think, how do we leave the legacy? How do we each play an important part in being um, members of the Blue Way Initiative or the Blue Way, um, the Rivers Initiative, or how are we all going to keep America's great outdoors alive? So thank you very much for being here. It's an absolute pleasure, and thank you all for your time today. It's great. <laughs>